it has finally happened. I have found an Ashford traditional. It's vintage. It is only an hour's drive from my house. And I just <sighs> said, it's mine. I'm going to go get it. We are going to do some videos about how to refurbish an Ashford traditional, what to do, how to fix it up, how to take care of the wood, how the tension system works, get spinning on it, all of those things that people have so many questions about. And um, yes, I'm just super excited, so let's go get this wheel. I drove for over an hour, but I have the wheel. She's in the back of my vehicle. You can see her there behind me. Um, it's a 1970s Ashford, uh, but there are some things that need to be fixed, replaced, and so we'll get her home, clean her up, take a good look, and then we will start our adventure of refurbishing this Ashford traditional. The woman I bought this wheel from said that this was her mother's wheel and her mother has passed away and her mother loved spinning at this wheel so I asked her if it would be all right if I named this wheel after her mother in her memory and she said she would love that it gave her goosebumps so this wheel this traditional now has a new name her name is Gail let's start with the drive wheel and work our way towards the business end from there this is pretty businessy over here. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, it spins and... It does the business. We did it. Cut the cord. It's on its own now. Something you can notice just by looking at the drive band is that it's really dry. It, it feels, is dry. It, it feels like twine that's been left outside for years. Yeah. I don't know. So, replacing the drive band. Something that you always want to check is that your wheel is going to turn true and that there are no cracks that the seams where the wheel is constructed, that there's still sound and nothing is coming apart. This wheel looks to be in very good condition other than the wood being a little dry and definitely dusty. The hub also looks to be in good condition. Sometimes the hub can crack and that's no good. I've seen it. So uh, do double check yours if you are refurbishing a wheel like this to make sure that the hub is in good condition. There's actually a seam on these wheels, on these traditionals, which you can kind of see right here. The two sections, there's a, uh, these two halves are joined together. If it's going to pull apart, that seam would be very noticeable. Let's take a look at the footman. The footman is the piece that connects the crank to the treadle. So we have two ends of, of uh, function to look at. The crank. Which is horribly rusty. It's terribly rusty. This is how the footman attaches to the treadle, and these are joined sometimes by a plastic piece on the newer models, but this one has a leather piece. It broke, so we're gonna need to get a new leather piece to go in here as well to connect this up. And then just generally, the wheel's pretty dusty and um, has some like little plaster dust or paint speckles or something on there, but I think that we can get that all cleaned up with a good oiling and wood conditioning. Let's come along to the other side of the wheel. Now we are oriented to the wheel as if you were sitting to spin. This is the orifice where the yarn will go in and wind onto the bobbin as you are spinning yarn. So there's a, a whole lot going on on this end of the wheel and there are several things that we need to make sure we have functioning to get it all together. Yeah, definitely. So everything that moves needs to be checked to see that it can actually move. The tension adjustment, again is rusty pretty much everything on here is, is rusty so this is something that's important to have working so that you can control the tension on the drive band itself and let's take this whole flyer off of here because i have a feeling it's very rusty yeah <laughs> so the orifice is really rusty um, it's hard to see, but there's quite a bit of rust in there. It's all surface rust. Across the whole thing, it all looks like surface rust, which means it can be cleaned up fairly easy. Um, the rust extends all the way over here. If we pull the bobbin off, um, the shaft is covered in surface rust as well. That needs to be cleaned up because the bobbin is very sticky. It doesn't turn freely on there. Yeah, and not, not really at all. We'll get that cleaned up. Bearings just need to be wiped down pretty much. I mean, like Evie said, we can just oil them. I'm guessing the graphite's probably worn out of them. This is a 
flyer lead or scotch tension wheel and there should be a knob that goes in this hole right here. It looks very similar to this, but it has a wooden part that sticks out that fits in there with tension. And this hook over here will hold a spring with a line that comes up and over the bobbin and onto this peg that goes in here. I hope that that has maybe given you an idea if you have come across an Ashford traditional of what you need to look for to make sure that the wheel is going to work. Ashford is a company that has been around a long time and the great thing about their wheels is that they are still in business and they still have parts that uh, support the wheels. So I'm going to order a kit that they have, which is a sort of restoration kit and it will have a lot of the pieces that we need to get this wheel functional and get this wheel spinning. She's going to be so lovely and I can't wait. She'll be like you've spun on a traditional before. I do have another traditional which does give me a little experience so I know what I'm looking at which is very cool is and it, hopefully helpful. There's some nostalgia here because this the other one was your first wheel. Ever. Yes my first ever wheel was an Ashford traditional from the 60s. Definitely some nostalgia. She's big sister. And now we have younger sister. I didn't know we had a family here. We have a family of wheels and it just keeps growing. Aren't you excited? Are you dad? <laughs> and then we'll clean up the metal pieces on here. Um, Cause those are not in the kit, but those are easily fixable. Yes. Let's get to work on that. Do this. We took the whole thing apart. It's in pieces. This is my masterpiece. This <laughs> is, put an S on the end. The, the main body, the wheel, the other leg, uh, the base plate for the mother of all, um, and the treadle assembly. We got the flyer and then the bobbin laid out and how they would actually go together. Um, your maidens and the base plate for where the mother of all actually attaches to the wheel. And then here's our little knob. So I pulled it off because the bolt was really rusty. It's not glued in there. It literally just is just, um, it's fit in there. So the tightness between these two components keeps it together. So it was just a matter of tapping it out. All the pieces just is, um, everything's on this magnet because it's going to go into our evapor rust. And then you just tie a string around it, dip it in there. And then a day later, all of these are shiny and new. The plan is, is that Evie's going to take care of all the wooden pieces. She's going to clean them up and then moist, moisten them? Moisturize. Moisturize them. Puts the lotion on. I found this from another guy that does restoration on YouTube. Uh, and it's not, there's no fumes. It's not toxic. Um, and it's not really detrimental to the metal. So if you let it sit in there for too long, unlike an acid, it's not going to be gone the next day if you forget about it. It'll just be really well cleaned. So this is the next day. Oh, and last night after we stopped recording, I realized I forgot to put the pins <laughs> from the Lazy Kate in there as well. And they were really rusty too. So that's what those long... Those long skewers are in there. Unrusty. <laughs> De-rustified. We have all the metal pieces taken care of, cleaned up, de-rusted. And now it's time to take care of this wood and get this wheel all uh, conditioned and protected and spruced up. So I have some boiled linseed oil and some rags. I'm going to just wipe it all down every nook and cranny and every little bit of inch of it that I can get to, I am going to wipe it down and let this oil just kind of soak into the wood and give it a good protective coating and conditioning.
one eternity later. These are the parts that we ordered to get this wheel refurbished and up and running. We got, first of all, a tension knob because it was completely missing. If you are refurbishing in Ashford, check which model you have. If you have the newer style of wheel, you will need the new tension knob. If you are working with a vintage, older style of wheel, you are going to need the old style of tension knob, and that's the one that I got for this wheel. We also got a couple bearings because this wheel, the bearings were just worn out. This is something that I can't really say which ones you need because it's pretty model specific. If you are wondering about bearings, contact your Ashford dealer and they will be able to help you figure out which parts you need. And finally, this is the most useful one of all. If you have a new to you Ashford wheel, I recommend applying this kit just because it's going to freshen everything up and make sure that it's spinning the way it's supposed to be spinning. To start with, we're going to reattach the leg that's on the flyer side of the wheel. There are two slots for side to side adjustment. So to reattach this part, I find it easier to lay this down and then flip the whole frame like this. One has a smaller hole and one has a larger hole because one's the orifice side. So the larger hole goes on this side, the smaller hole goes on the far side. Ta-da! Now we're gonna be installing the drive wheel bearings. Before you ever put the drive wheel in, you wanna have the pin go into the bearing holes and actually see. And this one's actually pretty tight. Is it too tight? Check it out. Wow. Most likely because the pin originally fit and the only thing that really changed is we took apart the whole thing. So what we're gonna do is you're going to pop all the screws. You're just gonna loosen them slightly. And while I'm doing this, I can actually feel the wheel shifting. The I whole... just saw it shift. Mm-hmm. And so now if you spin it, it's less worse. It is less worse. Okay, so this is a little tight still, but it's much better since we released the screws. And the screws aren't just like hanging out. They're just not snug all the way in. And so it kind of adjusted itself. Uh, but what I'm wondering is sometimes wheel manufacturers will talk about having a break-in period for the wheel and that has to do with the mechanical components that are uh, adjusting and rubbing on the bearings. And so because we've uh, replaced these bearings, even though this is not a new wheel, I think that we just applied a break-in period to this wheel. So it might be that We've done the adjustments for it to align. The bearings are a little tight and it just needs to be oiled and have the wheel run for a little bit and it's going to break it in. That's my theory. We can always give it a try. I mean, we're going to find out real quick once it's been on it. That's true. How it is. Right. So yeah. this pin goes through this hole and then down through this hole and it locks the wheel and the pin together. Otherwise, this crank will turn independently and it won't provide any power to the drive wheel and the drive wheel will just spin around on it and you won't be able to make any yarn. Exactly. That's too far. Oh. Give it a spin. Nice. She's moving. It feels pretty good. And again, like Evie was saying, the tightness in the wheel could be simply the break-in period. Truly the only way to find out, <laughs> I feel like Wilson <laughs> out of home improvement. We've done everything else and tightened up all of our screws again. It's time to get into this maintenance kit. We need some of the parts out of here. We have some oil, which is needed for anything that turns and rubs on the wheel. When we're spinning, we are going to oil it. We have a drive band. This is the leather connector between the footman and the uh, treadle. These springs are what we need with this line so that we can put the scotch tension together with the knob. And all these hooks are what we're going to use to uh, replace the old hooks for the flyer. Those old hooks are pretty gnarly. And the newer hooks are larger, so it should make it easier to spin a more versatile 
types of yarn. That's absolutely true. And then there's this little hook here. Uh, it's a little eye. It is going to be for one of these to put the scotch tension together. So those are all the parts that come in the maintenance kit. There we go. It's tied onto the spring. So now I can cut it because I know for sure. Wow, why is that so short? So now I'm gonna fix that. <laughs> the spring is lower down. There it is. The tension knob has a small hole in it. I'm gonna put the fishing line into that hole and then it can just wrap up and I'll have a little extra if I need it. And then you can just wrap the fishing line up on there. Any parts that rub on each other when the wheel is turning need to be oiled and that needs to be oiled a lot. So when you spin every time, make sure that you are applying more oil. Otherwise you can wear out your bearings and then you just have to do this whole project all over again. So we did it. I am so excited to spin on this wheel. It's completely refurbished. It's ready to go. It is. If you have watched this video and you are ready to start spinning for the very first time, I have a video that should be really helpful. It's about spinning for the very first time. So you can go check out that video next. Mark, thank you so much for your help. I really could not have done this without you. You're welcome. Gail says thank you too. This wheel's name is Gail. It is. News to me. It is. I'm a boat captain. Tally ho. <laughs> beep beep.